Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Scott Sugden. I am Product and Technology Outreach Manager here at L Acoustics. I'm glad you guys could join us today for uh, this weekly uh, webinar that we're doing uh, with a couple of our experts in the L Acoustics product development team. Uh, we've, we're going to talk about Sound Vision 3.16. Just came out last week. There's uh, three new features that are really user centric. Um, and uh, we're also going to take some questions. We've we've got a bunch of great questions in from social media, but if you're watching live right now in Teams, uh, don't hesitate to populate the Q&A with questions. We'll see if we can get to those. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to click below and hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel, the Acoustics YouTube channel, to get all the updates, latest videos, and all that. So uh, to kick it off, I want to introduce a colleague of mine, uh, Jan, Jan, you're coming to us from, it looks like not the R&D lab. It looks like you're coming to us from your home office. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. I'm currently in Brittany. The weather is quite nice. And so uh, that's the place where I grew actually. So I'm far from the R&D uh, department, but uh, still working uh, remote. Excellent. And Jan, you've been with Acoustics now a couple of years and your role is in the application team for uh, products. Uh, if you will, we describe your role often as like a product owner, is that correct? Yeah, that's uh, how it is called. Um, I would say that, uh, well, the application design team um, has the role to validate uh, every product that comes from the R&D before going to, to the field. And uh, that concerns enclosures, softwares, everything. So uh, on my Paul, uh, I'm with uh, Sam and, uh, and Antoine, another guy, uh, validating everything on SunVision, acoustics and simulation. So that deals with SunVision, of course, but of course the, the GLLs as well for Ease, Cat Acoustics and uh, everything related to, to acoustics and simulation, but the very big part is uh, on SunVision. Excellent. And, and Jan, your background, you've uh, you came to us, you, you've done work in sound before, you've got a, a, a strong background in acoustics. Um, you have uh, multiple degrees, three bicycles, uh, a set of golf clubs um, yeah. and an apartment. Is that is that about right? Yeah, uh, it's not right for the bicycles, but uh, everything you said that is true. OK, so okay. Uh, no, my background is a uh, uh, I'm well, I started as a civil engineer. Uh, many years ago, like 15 years ago, and then I, I, gra I graduated uh, as a, a noise control engineer. So I spent many years uh, studying acoustics for rooms, theaters, and so on, but it was not focused at all on loudspeakers, sources, but just the materials, everything, you know, on the simulation side, with a lot of cat acoustics is as well. And um, it's been two years now that I moved to L Acoustics and that I have this role of uh, product owner for SunVision. And um, uh, if I should explain it a little bit, um, I would say that uh, to develop SunVision, you know, you have requests from a lot of different peoples. Uh, it can come from uh, the user directly. They may need uh, a new feature, a bug fix or whatever, and that would be one side. Another side would be the application engineers in our team when they need to do this or this. And uh, as well, uh, we have those big projects like uh, users know with autosplay, autofilter, and when they come from the R&D, they have to move as well to SunVision. So my role there is to, uh, to try to give the priority to what is needed. Excellent. Uh, and, and joining us today, Jan, we have someone from the product uh, development team and application as well. Sam, uh, Sam, you're coming to us from, it also does not look like you're in the R&D lab at L Acoustics, is that correct? That is correct. I'm here in York in the UK. It's pretty miserable here, but it's, uh, it's <laughs> an office it's of some UK's. sort. <laughs> the typical UK summer weather is what you're saying. As, as exactly. Exactly. And uh, if this was any other year, this would be the perfect day for a music festival. Is that right? It would be uh, terrible weather in the UK. Oh, yes. In the middle of a muddy field, I'm sure. Yeah, excellent. And Sam, uh, you joined L Acoustics, I believe, uh, the day lockdown started. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. About four months ago, literally the first day I was meant to fly out to L Acoustics. And that's the first day lockdown happened. So I've not yet left my office. 
Excellent. Well, Sam, we're glad you could join us. You've been uh, you've been a field engineer for the last uh, 10, 15 years, uh, touring sound systems, festivals, installations, special events, television shows, uh, backyard birthday parties, uh, bar mitzvahs, uh, 50th <laughs> wedding anniversaries. Um, have I forgot anything? I don't think so. That's quite a thorough list you've given. Um, yeah. But yes, absolutely every kind of show I've worked on throughout the last 10, 15 years. Great. And you're helping out. Uh, you're not solely dedicated to Sound Vision, but a number of the products specifically from that field perspective. And your role is to really help liaise with the users out there and the team developing the software. Is that right? That is correct. So um, I'm one of the application design engineers. Um, and part of my role is to actually look at um, trying to specify new features, um, look, identify what's needed on the field, what our end users may require, and actually how to implement them. And I will come up with a specification. And as part of the team, we will all challenge that to try and get the best results. Um, so that's part of my role. Excellent. Well, Sam, thank you for joining us today. Um, so three new features, Jan. Um, can you start us out with uh, but what's behind door number one? What is the first big new feature today in the sound vision that everyone should be really excited about? Yeah, um, well, I'm sure the users, they know already because we shared a video showing the the, the new feature, so it, it won't be a big surprise, but I can demonstrate the first one. Uh, do you see my screen with Sun Vision here? I, I, I got it coming in, sending it live to everyone around the world right now. There you go. Okay. So um, the first one is uh, if I put a new source here, so let's say a K2, and uh, I would jump directly to the 2D cut view and adjust the dimus a little bit, the sight angle, okay. So now you can see here that my sight angle is minus, minus 5.1. So maybe I want to play with in its play and optimize. So now I have a K2 with a set of angles. I can zoom in a little bit to show this. And um, this K2 um, has a frame which is K2 bump, and this bumper uh, is hanged with two motors. So to show this, I will go in the mechanics view here. So if I do this, now you shall see it. I will remove the SPL target. So there you see that we have the bumper with two pickup points for this K2. Now, um, in the previous version, when you decided to change from two to one motor, then uh, it put it selected uh, automatically and by default the number zero. Um, well, at least the extremity of the bar of the bumper, and uh, it meant that uh, the user had to check all the holes one by one to find again what. Uh, would be the perfect all to reach the closest sight angle that they wanted. Okay, so now what we have is that if we go from two to one motor, what you saw here is that it selected automatically the whole number 10 on K2, and uh, this whole number 10 gives as a result a sight angle of minus 4.5. So you see here that um, Sun Vision has calculated the closest um, uh, solution, uh, which is not exactly the same, but physically the, the closest solution that you can have uh, with this K2 bump, with the bar on all hay, uh, is with the front pickup point uh, number 10. Okay. Oh, very cool. So um, historically for years, obviously as a user, I would have had to uh, check to see what the best option is to get back to the, the desired angle. And now if we switch to single point, it just automatically grabs the closest angle to a given sight angle that you've defined uh, in your design, right? And so it's just going to do that automatically. No, no challenges there in that sense. Yeah. And uh, maybe um... Uh, for the user, uh, just to notice the the calculation for the moment is uh, it really gives the closest possibility. So, so it's not uh, a round, it's not a round up or a round down. It's just whatever is the closest number. So it doesn't automatically bias one way or the other. It's if, if this hole is 
two tenths off and this hole is four tenths off, it's always going to the one that's two tenths off. Yeah, exactly. Um, we had that uh, question when we when we thought of this feature because um, some people uh, were saying, OK, uh, I would rather uh, overshoot a little bit, so we should select the upper value um, for the side angle. But there were some pros and cons because the opposite way was OK, but I have the cables at the back of my array, so I would like rather to have the lowest value. So sure. we, we didn't have any any you know single uh, position on this so what we chose to to let the the closest value understood hey, yeah uh, so sam um jan's just explained this uh, scenario to us you're a user in the field before you worked here five months ago you were doing that bar mitzvah um uh um do you have a bias it's your is your preference to overshoot or undershoot with a single point hang which way do you lean um, a lot of that just depends on how much you actually trust the uh, measurements the drawing itself um, in a tricky situation, obviously the minute you're down to a single point motor, you know once it's implemented, what once it's in the air, you can't change that, you can't adjust that. If you've got any kind of hesitation that the drawing might be slightly off uh, and you've got no way of checking on site, you'd rather err on the side of caution and know that you've covered the audience. So it's quite common to overshoot. Sure. Um, however, if you do know the venue very well, you know it inside out, um, you do have cables hanging off the back of an array. You know that's going to change the sight angle slightly. Um, in that scenario, I would ten tend to undershoot, knowing that the um, cable, weight. cable weight will counterbalance that. Yeah, I suppose if I'm in a theater and we're not going to do a pickup point for the cable, right? It's just going to drop down that 12 meters. Boy, 12 meters of of cable for a, a 12 box Kara cluster probably weighs 20, 30 kilograms, something like that. Um, and that's going to put a fair amount of weight, um, potentially causing the array to, to tilt up more. Um, so I, I guess my million dollar question, why, why is SoundVision not calculating that? Is it simply because we don't know? Is, is that the reason? To be honest, yeah. There's so, there's, um, so much of this is down to choice, down to the user knowing the application. Um, and obviously everyone works in so many different ways. Because of this, we've left it down to the user to actually choose we're not saying they must use in this scenario pick up point 10. We're saying this is the starting point that's closest to their sight angle and they can still choose if they want to go one up or one down. Cool, uh, that's great. And, and Jan, one quick question. I see three or four people in the live Q&A today in Teams um, all asking a very similar question. I, I feel like I know the answer to this, but um, you know, on Kara and K2 especially, and now on, uh, we have this really neat hole A, hole B option where the bumper and the bar, which are two different elements, actually can almost double their resolution, right? So if let me explain this a little bit. If you're not super familiar with Kara or K2, maybe you've had it and you've never really realized what it's for, but on Kara or K2, that hole A to hole B actually shifts that top bar by what half a rigging point, right? So you, you effectively double your resolution with a really simple shift. Um, which is great for a single point hang. Uh, does this new feature utilize that resolution as well, or or is that not something that's that's uh, that's thought up in this calculation? Uh, it is something that is not done in the calculation yet. Um, meaning that um, when you select here, you know the rigging option for your array, you are selecting one line which uh, for the software is one rigging frame, meaning that SoundVision doesn't know that here uh, the K2 bump with one bar is the same uh, here um, with the K2 bump with one bar, but hanged at all B. Okay. So uh, when yeah, I, when I'm going to interrupt you real quick, yeah, and just so you know, um, lovely Teams uh, webinar here, we're not seeing the pop-up window, um, so I'm just going to describe that pop-up window normally um, in SoundVision, you have a list of all available bumpers. And although we think of that that K2 bump or that M bar um, and M bump on Kara as 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 two elements, SoundVision treats it as one element, right? So you have to swap out the entire element for another accessory. Is that is that the the thought here, if you will? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to me to stop sharing and share, you know, the full screen so that users see it. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get to that on the next round here. I'm not too worried about that, but um, effectively, at the moment, we don't take into account the different types of bumper for sound vision purposes. Um, uh, yes, the, K2 the program, 
yeah. considers that it it's two different frames, two different bumpers for the moment. So uh, from the software point of view, um, this is not an easy trick uh, to go and check what is done on another bumper. So at one point, of course, we will uh, want to have this uh, check, you know, on various options, but this is something that is not implemented now. We will cool. in, in the future, but uh, this is something that I cannot tell when for the moment. Excellent. And and so this is this is pretty exciting. Obviously, um, it's something uh, Jan is very familiar with. I've been asking if we could do this for years. Um, uh, you know, um, we have an L acoustic sound vision tip jar. So if you guys want to send in all your loose change, um, care of Jan Gael uh, and Mark Cousy, L acoustics. Um, so we have different jars you can fill. This was one of the the more exciting ones. So Jan, thank you. We're all really excited about that. Um, the big question is what's behind door number two? And I think it's kind of a similar feature. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, door number two is, uh, for example, if I go back again, let me delete this one, create a new one. And door number two is here. So I have again a K2 and this K2, if I look from the side there, you see here, so I have two motors. Um, one pickup point at the very back position and one at the very front. And there, uh, what is new in this 316 version is that now you can move as well the front pickup point, which is something that was not possible uh, for years uh, in Sound Vision. So now I can move this, and you see I went here from all eight, uh, one to, uh, to two, and it adapts. Um, every you know uh, load that is calculated you know for this rigging point so this gives more possibility and to be honest um, on this one uh, maybe i shall let sam explain it a little bit because um, uh, some months before he came to L acoustics so uh, uh, it was uh, may maybe one year ago something like that uh, he sent a request to the support address saying hey Sunvision, uh, i would need to uh, move the front pickup point for one application uh, and uh, maybe some i shall let you tell the rest of the story Oh, so Sam is new to the application team here at L Acoustics, and there's an important thing he's now learned, which is if he leaves his mic muted in a in a, in a <laughs> webinar, he's required it to buy everyone, going in, to happen. everyone in the team a beer, right? So um, what Sam hasn't learned yet is there's 57 of us, so um, it's a pretty expensive mistake to make. But um, Sam, just be known that Tony Zabo still owes you seven beers, so you've got a, a ways to go before you're in that kind of trouble. Um, so Sam, uh, front pickup points. We've got uh, the ability to modify the position. Why would we do that? Um, well, if I share my screen, I'll explain the scenario that I was faced with about a year ago now, which you should be able to see here. Yeah, I got it right here. Excellent. Perfect. So what we're looking at is a sound vision drawing of Wembley Stadium in London, in London. and this is a, a show that we took care of every single year that came uh, came back to us. Um, and on this particular year, they changed the stage structure for us. Um, so what we have here is our side hang consisting of 22 K2 and two Cara. Only for some reason this year, we had a much smaller header truss. Um, yeah, I see so that. You know, this isn't the exact same structure. A lot of people will be saying, why don't we use this bit on the back at the front? This is just indicative of how much um, length the header truss protruded from the tower. So just to clarify, Sam, you you found the easy solution, which was just to move the truss you had drawn from the year before upstage by half a meter, as opposed Correct. to redraw the truss. Yeah, yes. that's uh, that's far easier. I'm, I'm so totally with you on that. For this scenario, um, one of the things I drew in, just so I could easily visualize this, was I drew in the two chains, which you can just about hopefully make out here. Yeah, I see them there. Oh, an easy cool. way to see the very end point pickup point on the bump. So in this scenario, what we had is the actual PA clashes with the tower because we don't have enough distance. If we look in there, we also have the bump clashes with the tower. Hmm. Um, a lot of people might be saying, why don't we have the K2 bar in the default position? 
that way at least the PA would be moved forward. However, we still have the K2 bar hitting, the tower. hitting, hitting yeah. the tower here, which obviously isn't an option. Now at the time um, in Sound Vision, we knew we could move the rear pickup point. So my question was, why can't we move the front pickup point? If we could do that, we could essentially shift the whole PA about a foot forward. So at the time I got in contact with Sergey, who's one of the UK uh, touring application engineers and said, this is the scenario I'm facing. I really need to move the front pickup point. I'm pretty sure it's OK, but as always, safety first, we need to check. Um, so he went away, raised this through the correct channels. And it took about a week to get an answer from R&D, who basically did the calculations, checked all the weight loading for me. Um, and basically said, yes, you're OK to do this. So we had a play with this a little bit. And it turns out that what we needed here was if I move the front point to pick to pick up hole 16, which we can see here, the difference between the motor separation from 1.19 to 0.89 is 30 centimeters, so about a foot. There you go. So that is exactly what we did here. So if I hide that, so this PA is moved forward one foot, and you can see exactly just about where the chains hit the K2 bar. And if I change that image, you can see that at no point is this hitting the tower. No, that's great. Um, so in this scenario, it was really useful. And just as an extra here, you should see there is a picture of the hang in uh, in real life. It's a bit hard to make out, but you can see exactly where the adjusted pickup point is there. So what took me a year, uh, sorry, what took me a week to get an answer last last year? You can do it in a minute. Yeah, and that's I think the important thing is we could always do this. However, to get an answer, whether it was safe or not, you had to email uh, Sergey, who had to message Jan, who had to check with Alex, who had to do some calculation, who had to send it back to Jan, who had to send it back to Sergey, who had to send it back to Sam, right? Yeah, you're okay. correct. So, um, and for those who don't know, Alex is our head of uh, mechanical engineering. So, Alex, if you're watching us live, get back to work. Um, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, enjoy uh, the conversation, Alex, as you're doing the dishes. Um, so, um, Sam, that's really cool. Uh, I, I can imagine that that's one important need is, hey, we've we've got a, a mechanical issue. We're trying to shift the array positionally to get away from an obstacle. I can imagine there's maybe a second need, which is, oh, by the way, each of our rigging points is only so strong. Is that is that maybe a scenario where you might use this as well to, to balance loads? Um, I'd have to think, come up with a scenario for this exactly, but um... But yes, effectively, it's just a case of moving it forward to try and shift the weight load right. a little so, bit by adjusting the points. Yeah, I, I can think of a scenario. Uh, the, 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 there's a small music festival out in the desert of Palm Springs called Coachella, and we have the ginormous hang of PA, and it's pointed down because it's a field, so almost all the weight is on that back point. Um, we actually intentionally put some angle in some of the subs to try to help shift some weight forward. The K1SB is on top. Um, and it's mainly just so the PA doesn't swing in the wind, because if you only have weight on one point, it's really hard to be stable. So if we could shift a point a little bit upstage or downstage, that, that could be a help. So that's definitely something we can do on, on K2, on Kara, on A-series, um, and, and that's a really great solution for that. So um, really cool. Um, so that's door number two. Um, Correct. Who's going to reveal what's behind door number three? Um, is it the old guard, Jan Gael, or is it the new guy, Sam? So, Sam, I'm going to give you the honors. What is behind door number three? So door number three is we now have um, a roll axis available for coaxial sources. And Ooh, to demonstrate this... I knew it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to demonstrate this, we have an application here. Um, so here we see a club scenario, um, which is fairly common. We have columns down the venue. We have our main system consisting of K2 by our stage. And to detail the scenario, if we map this, we can see we have shadow spots caused by the columns. Sure. Um, 
we will look at one side unmuted just to make this really obvious. Now, if we look at the situation, we're going to add some delay speakers for each column. We'll start by adding an X12, which we see here. And here we see the X12 earn what it's doing in its current state. If we solo this, we will see the coverage. Sure. When it's vertical, we have a wide 90 degree um, uh, dispersion. Sure. And one of the things is in this scenario where we only want to cover to cover a narrow passage, we're going to get quite big timing uh, discrepancies. So we want to kind of minimize the overlap. So if we change this to horizontal, which we've always been able to do, to do, we can keep this to a narrow coverage. So in this scenario, because we're only looking at covering a narrow coverage, that's the ideal solution. So we then move to the second column where now we see a much wider um, wider coverage needed. So again, what we will do is place next 12 here. And if we look at what it's doing. On horizontal, which again, I will just solo so we can have a look at it. We have a fairly wide, oops, sorry, we have a fairly wide coverage. If we go to our horizontal, we have our narrow coverage, which we know of. And again, if we look at the area that we actually want to cover, and I'll mute that, we can see that on the narrow coverage, on the 60 degrees, it's not properly covering the edge of our boundary here. However, now we introduce the roll axis to really try and point the speaker exactly where we would like. If I introduce this angle here, which we will put at 60, two things happen. Down here, we can see that actually the speaker's been rotated about its local Y axis, so about its face. Yeah. So I'll show that more in a second. If we look at the mapping though, we can now see it's a much smoother um, SPL across this shadow zone. So again, to solo this and see what it's doing, we have at zero degrees, which is our narrow 60 degrees, 60 degree dispersion. And we see our hotspot here, which is not desirable. If we change that 90 degrees, we effectively put it at a vertical um, orientation and we have it very wide here. And again, if we now change the roll axis to our 60, we can see that we've narrowed the dispersion slightly, but still pointed this where we want. So we can see that actually in this scenario, this is ideal for us. So by giving the, the roll axis, it allows the user to properly point the source exactly where they would like it. That's that's really neat. So um, this is obviously something that makes a lot of sense for the non coaxial or concentric uh, coverage of the point sources. So this makes sense for X15 and X12. Exactly. It probably doesn't do a lot of functional use for a 5XT though, right? Where where the 5XT is yeah. perfectly conical output. That's correct. Yeah. So I'm a product and technology outreach manager. Let's think of this from a product role. We have the X12, which is 90 by 60 nominally. And what you're saying is historically we could point it in the 60 degree wide for the horizontal or the 90 degree wide for the horizontal, but that was our limit. And now you're giving me the ability to roll it, which effectively, if it's a 2D view, allows me to make any speaker between 60 and 90. So we've actually taken the Acoustics product portfolio and made it infinitely large, as long as you want a speaker between 90 and 60 for the X12. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Uh Maybe another application, you know, when we are discussing this is uh, when you put, for example, the next 12 as a lateral speaker uh, and you are in a theater with a, an audience that has an angle, you know, if you are putting some uh, surrounds or delays, then you can really shape, you know, the coverage of the speaker to adapt the angle of the audience there. So oh, that makes is, oh, that makes yeah. perfect sense, right? I've got a seating plane that's like this. Exactly. And I would have normally pointed my X12 straight out, or that's all SunVision would let me do. Yeah. And so I'm I'm not getting the maximum coverage. What I want to do is actually roll it to be perpendicular 
exactly. to the, the audience geometry. That's really cool. So I can see where that feature makes a lot of sense um, uh, for uh, certain applications. I, I'm assuming we can't take a K1 array and point it on and hang it sideways at 45 degrees. Is that is that going to work? No, it's not working. Even internally, we don't have this, you know. Okay. <laughs> so, no, it's only for the coaxial sources. Um, we already had some requests uh, uh, regarding, uh, you know, A series uh, when having one box because uh, they are often used as uh, lateral speakers. And sure. uh, even we had some requests uh, uh, regarding SIVA as well uh, with the integration uh, of SIVA on laterals as well to say that uh, if the if if we have an audience like that it would be cool but uh, we are still discussing this it was a starting point you know to to put this available for all the coaxial sources and maybe if needed we will uh, move forward on the subject that's great excellent um, so this obviously looks like it was a feature that was extensively challenging to implement Jan yeah, I'm imagining this was hundreds of hours of coding from some of our top software developers. Um, or is this just one of those things that's kind of always been there and we just realize, hey, let's make this available to the users? Now, it, it was, of course, the, the second option because, uh, as you understand, part, part of our role is to discuss the priorities. So, obviously, if the user, they are uh, seeing this and saying, okay, uh, I would like something different. For example, uh, they are, we can think of tons of uh, features that would be more uh, priority to, to this one. Uh, but actually, uh, these three features, uh, they were uh, developed uh, regarding uh, another big project that will come at one point in, in Sound Vision. But um, this, these little three features, they were ready. So it was almost free uh, to give them to the public user. So we just had uh, to check uh, mechanically that everything was OK. And because as uh, Sam already said, uh, uh, Sun Vision is a very cool program. We can do a lot and uh, have fun with it. But uh, really, the safety is the first concern because the last thing that we want is that something, you know, fail or crashes or whatever. So um, we had a proper check on all the, the bumpers that were uh, allowed to have the movable from pickup point, the automatic selection, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, now it's, it was almost free, you know, to give this to the, to the user because already developed. And uh, one thing that we can say is that the role axis, for example, this is something that was in the code of some vision for years, and it was just like uh, one comma to retrieve and uh, to, to remove so that it appeared and, uh, and uh, it, we were able to use it. Uh, that's, that's great. So uh, <clears throat> real quick here, Sam, uh, someone was asking, um, how do I actually uh, install that X12 rolled? I mean, do we have to buy another bumper to get to that? Is there a way to get there? Um, how, how would you actually go about doing that? Um, no, so for the coaxial sources, there's a large uh, range of accessories that go with this. So for an X12, it could be anything from um, one of the, I believe it's the tilt brackets. Uh, that, so we have either a long bracket or a short bracket, depending on the orientation. And with a tilt bracket, you can completely change the orientation to give you that right. full roll axis. So we could, we could. I'm imagining this. We could, we could use uh, any of the what we might call a yoke. Um, we call these the the long or the yes. short brackets. Yeah. And if it's an install, especially, I'm imagining I just bolt it to the wall at whatever set angle I want. Um, uh, or if it's hanging from above, I could mount it to the ceiling from whatever set angle I want uh, to achieve that that combination, that compound angle. Is that right? Uh, yes. Cool. That's great. So, um, guys, those are the three new features today. That's uh, door number one, door number two, door number three. Unlike every game show I've ever seen in my life, any door you open, you get a new prize. So that's great. Um, nobody's going home with uh, without a car. Um, so that's exciting. Um, we had a few questions coming in uh, today live. Um, a lot of people seem pretty excited about the uh, automatic selection of the sight angle when you switch to single point hang. So congratulations on that. It looks like there's a lot of people that want um, obviously the awareness between hole A and hole B for K2 and Kara. Um, so, so Jan and Sam, um, uh, we need to fill up that tip jar. Once again, guys, send your loose change. L Acoustics, care of Jan Gael, Marcus France. Um, if that jar gets full enough, he'll be able to buy everyone a coffee in R&D. They will then be able to finish the development of that. 
Yeah. But more important, a um, couple questions coming in from social media. I have a good one. I'm going to kick this to Jan first. Um, Jan, someone was asking, will there be support for Kara pullback in a future SoundVision release? Um, well, the answer is yes, uh, because you can do it uh, in reality, okay? The, the the Kara pullback. I mean, you can physically, you know, put a, a, a rig bar and do your pullback. So uh, this is a lack currently that we don't have the, the pullback with Kara. And um, so this will come definitely to at what at one point, uh, but uh, the I cannot tell uh, when for the moment, because um, as I explained already, uh, there are a lot of uh, priorities and it's uh, always difficult to, you know, move forward with a very little and useful feature uh, versus a very interesting and very big project that will bring some really large improvement to the sound and quality. So we are dealing with everything. So uh, definitely the, the pullback with Cara will be implemented in Sun Vision. Excellent. Um, I got one for Sam coming up here. Sam, um, we have a user who is asking, uh, why do I not see the sub response when I have an audience listening level? So this is a question in from, I believe, Instagram. Um, you know, I don't know if you could uh, quickly develop us a little example or at least explain it. Why I don't see the sub response when there's an audience listening level. If is my screen active there? It is. Okay, I, I, see you, I see you. I see you clearly now. I'm hoping I can very quickly use this as an example. So here we have some subs across the front of the stage. And the scenario you are talking about is if we go to sub, um, if I unmute those, we go to sub mode here we will see that this is not mapped on the audience plane um, this is to do with the actual physical limitation of where the sub is compared to the audience plane so at the moment because it assumes this is a solid plane um, the subs are physically below this um, so as a quick um, method to try and map onto this the way i go about doing this is if we bring up our 3D room view and select our floor, I very quickly just move the audience listening level down to 0 0.1 meters when dealing with our subs, and of and course change the scale. Let's change the scale here to yeah. something more usable. There you go. And that's a quick way of doing it. Um, I always choose 0 0.1 as the minute you put zero. This disables the audience surface, so you then Got have it. to click again. Um, so it's a quick change that down, and then once you're finished, once you're happy with the subs, put that back up. Okay, got it. And, and Jan, this kind of relates to a couple of years ago. We added, um, we changed the way audiences were done so that um, the audience listening plane was, if you will, an extrusion. Um, from the ground surface and this was done so that we didn't end up with scenarios where speakers shot between the audience and hit places they shouldn't hit right so we we actually changed the way sound vision extruded that audience plane and was that two years ago maybe does that sound right john uh, possibly i think it's more than two years ago because i arrived two years ago and this was before i came to acoustics <laughs> this, this is this is before jan okay got it yeah so, yeah <laughs> so so <laughs> sound vision before jan yeah yeah got it all right so sound vision actually extrudes the surface and this helps us in a, in a balcony situation or an audience situation where a speaker hits the front of the audience it used to actually sometimes go through and end up somewhere else um, and so the, the consequence is that, of course, um, if there's a speaker below that plane, it's obstructed by the front of the plane, right? And yeah. sound vision calculates shadows of, of surfaces or objects. Um, the second thing is sound vision is uh, really smart, if you will, and it only calculates the sound pressure level on one side of a surface. Is that correct, Jan? Uh, yes, it is. It is correct. I mean, uh, you you calculate the um, the SPL on the I would say on the top surface, meaning uh, you calculate what you see. If you are seated, you see the the loudspeaker, then it will be calculated uh, where you are seated, but not on the reversed side. Right, okay. and so bec because of that, if we have the speaker below a surface, it's hitting the back side of the surface, which won't calculate an SPL on that bottom side, and the surface is not transparent. So um, yeah. Sam's solution is to 
drop the audience listening level. Um, I'm assuming, Sam, there's another way, which is you can hover your speakers as if they're in a, a Michael J. Fox movie from 1993. That is correct. You would, if you put your subs in a subgroup, you yep. can literally just lift them up the, say, 1.7 meters that is needed. Sure, and, and know and that that's going to change that. There we go. Yeah. Right, so that's the solution number two. So if you don't see sublevel, problem number one is probably they're below the surface. Um, problem number two is that uh, your surface is obstructing the view. That could be a scenario. And there's also problem number three, which pivots us nicely into a question that we had, which is why when I look at CARA in SB18 in an array, I have selected the bandwidth of say 50 to 200 Hertz in sound vision. I'm not seeing the sub response. It's confusing me. Is that also a common kind of a stumble point in sound vision? I'll kick that to Sam. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Um, so actually, um, currently it's working exactly the way it's designed to do. Um, to demonstrate this a little bit, we will very quickly put the source in. So let's have a Cara source here, which we'll zoom in on. Um, let's put in a couple of SB18 so that we can demonstrate what's being done. And I'm just going to mute all other sources apart from this. So what we have at the moment is if we change our frequency response for the main custom bandwidth down to, say, 32 to 60, and we will use that. If we map this, all we're going to see here is the frequency response from the CARA, not the SB18, even though they're part of the same source. To view the frequencies from the SB18 would have to be in sub mapping mode. Got it. Now we can see we get this, the, the mapping from the SB18. Um, this is because currently they're mapped as two very different enclosures, um, very different boxes. So this is working the way it's designed it's to work. Sure, yeah. understood, understood. That makes sense to me. So um, currently as, as it exists, uh, the SB18 and the CARA are physically in the same array, but they're treated as two separate enclosures. And we have the sub mode for any of the sub enclosures. Um, and then of course we have the standard mode for all of the full range enclosures. Is that is that the right way to put it, Jan? Yeah, exactly. That's uh, as clear as you said. And um, uh, well, currently it works properly well like that. And of course, at one point in the future, we will want to have this, uh, uh, everything together, you know, just have one single mode. This is as well, uh, not a, a big uh, a big new here. We, we know that we want to move in this direction so that it simplifies the life of the user, which is always the point. So um, uh, this takes, uh, even if it seems quite easy, uh, under the hood, it's uh, not as easy as it seems to be. So it will take a little bit of time, but at one point we will reach uh, a single mode for every enclosure in some vision. Well, that's, that's great. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I, I for sure know a lot of people that, uh, uh, would love to be able to see that uh, all in one mode and, and just simplify that that accidental. Why am I not seeing this? Uh, you know, yeah. I forgot to click the button. So that's great. Um, speaking of trying to understand why something doesn't work, um, Jan, um, SoundVision actually the last year or two, uh, thanks to uh, the time after Jan, um, we've really improved the help section a lot. Um, and, and it's quite uh, an improvement over the last couple of years. Um, is there uh, is there some 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 new features in the help section, or is there something you guys are working on diligently right now to help people out there who are using SoundVision a lot? Uh, is there anything you can talk about there? Well, uh, thanks for this one because uh, I think we we should uh, enhance uh, a little bit the the help section in SoundVision because uh, we are really doing a great effort on this one, so that every new feature is documented. For example, in 316, you can check that uh, the Rolexes, the automatic selection of the single pickup point is documented. Everything is there, and we have as well some tutorials. You know, sometimes people say, OK, uh, I want to, to get started on Sound Vision. And if I, if I go to Google and YouTube and I, I don't find anything or nothing from Acoustics, well, if you download Sound Vision, you have some tutorials 
uh, with videos uh, to show you uh, exactly how to get started to move with the layout, put a source, uh, draw a venue very simply. So this is something that is quite uh, important to say. Uh, we are doing quite a, uh, a big effort on the documentation and currently what the users uh, report with the documentation is that it's quite difficult to find the information. The information is there, uh, it's relevant, it's uh, up to date, but uh, they say, OK, I don't uh, know which way to go to find the information on electronic settings, for example, because I can click uh, on various sections and I don't find it uh, directly. So it would be very nice to have a search, uh, a search bar uh, so that I can get directly to the content I am looking for. And uh, actually, uh, I wanted to say that this is something that we are working on. The, um, the difficulties here is that it doesn't work exactly the same uh, regarding uh, if the documentation is embedded or online, if it's on Mac or Windows, and so on and so on. You know, from the, from the user point of view, I would say that um, it's always very simple to put a feature or something but when you think from the software point of view, uh, then you, you realize that you always have to deal with a lot of exceptions and uh, dependence to other stuff. So um, uh, we know that this is needed and this, is, um, and this, this will be really useful. So at one point, uh, we will have a search bar in the help section. But currently, um, the tutorials is a big section that you, if you just, uh, Sam, you are sharing. So if you if you are clicking to the help section, you will see that when you arrive directly, you have the the tutorial section. You see it's just right there on the right. Audience listening levels. You can go there, and uh, you will have the videos and so on. Oh, it's great. You just <laughs> so this, have to. Yeah. This looks like you stole the the concept from Network Manager, and maybe. Uh, uh, a lot of people aren't as familiar with that either, but the help section in Network Manager and Sound Vision come with embedded video tutorials. You can watch and see how to do basic functionality, and it's an easy way to figure out what new features exist with each release as well, right, Jan? Yeah, exactly. Cool. This is great. But you're saying what we're going to try to do here shortly is improve this with an embedded search function so you can, if you're saying uh, rigging, it'll find everywhere that rigging is mentioned in the help. Yeah or you're yeah. looking for an option, for example, I don't know, atmospheric conditions or whatever, you want to, to go fast on this, and then you don't have to, to, to think, okay, how did they think they would organize, you know, the help section? You just search and you, you find it. That's great, excellent. Well, this is, this is awesome news. Um, I've got $1 million feature request. I'm gonna put it out there. I'm gonna put you on the spot for this, Jan. Um, those of you who have watched some of these webinars over the last, uh, six months, five months, four months um, are familiar with this. Um, I'm a big fan of subwoofers. Uh, nothing moves like low frequencies. Um, uh, uh, you may have also heard me say I'm not a big fan of sub arcs, um, uh, but I do like spacing my subs out from time to time. Uh, is there any way for me to do this? Is this a feature coming soon? Is the tip jar full yet? Jan, can I space out my subwoofers? Well, currently uh, you cannot, uh, unless you do it, you know, sub by sub, uh, which is not really convenient. Um, what I can say here is that it is an identified project that we are uh, specifying currently with uh, Sam, meaning uh, uh, the same. I, I think uh, putting some space between sub is, uh, when we say it like that, is quite simple but we always try to reach a point where we do the best, you know? So we think of the various possibilities to do it, of the what would be really the best for the user, and we think as well of the, of course, the acoustic quality. So we don't want to give the user all the possibilities if it doesn't mean anything from the acoustical point of view. So we are, uh, of course, uh, concerned about uh, what would be the best from the user point of view and from the acoustic point of view as well. So we are working on this one. This will come uh, for sure in Sound Vision uh, at one point. Uh, I'm, I would say it, it, it may come not so, so, so long in the future, but, you know, I cannot say more. <laughs> so if 
if uh, Jan, if if a user out there is like me and wants this put forward in the the list of priorities, is that uh, five euros, ten euros, or twenty euros? Like, what's what's the amount here that will will excite um, the development team a bit? Um, uh, is it a proper uh, English beer? Is it um, uh, some uh, you know some Bavarian uh, sausage? What what do we need to do here to to just get this going? Well, just messages, you know, saying, hey, you're doing a great job and uh, I really like your, uh, the only stuff I miss here is this and this. But, uh, you know, um, uh, this is the kind of feedback that we have from the training as well, because uh, we discuss a lot within the teams. And for example, uh, I'm very curious often to say, OK, if someone goes to a, a system fundamental training uh, regarding Sun Vision, what is your first impression? What do you miss? What is good? What is not good? How can we improve it? And so on and so on, so that I get feedback some, from the field. And uh, it's very often that people say, OK, uh, I would like to 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 put some space between the subs quite easily and so on so we are working on it but uh, uh well i i don't accept money from the users you know to develop <laughs> or to change the priorities <laughs> Understood. Well, um, Jan, I'm disappointed in your ethics. Um, I would have thought uh, thought more of this. Um, so, Sam, Jan, Sam, I, I'll go to you on this. Uh, if a user has a problem with Sound Vision, if a user has a feature request with Sound Vision, if a user wants to send in kudos about uh, Sound Vision, um, how do they do this, Sam? How is the best way to get a hold of the team in application uh, product design? Um, so the the easiest way is either to send an email into the sound vision um the email there or to actually get directly in contact with their local application engineer whether it's touring or install any of the guys will help and forward a request on to us um, and and what is that email sam i'm going to put you on the spot you've only been here four months do you know the email address yet? <laughs> i won't help you sam oh that's just mean um <laughs> off the top of my head i believe no, ba, ba, ba. oh man, I it's... cannot remember. That's a bad point, isn't no, it? <laughs> it? It is sunvision at l dash acoustics.com. So and for the, oh, got it. Yeah, for the user to know, um, uh, this email address is shared by uh, Sam, me, and Antoine, which is working with me. So we are the three of us uh, dealing and checking it uh, every day. So uh, part of our role is really to provide help as well to the user. I'm sometimes surprised to see, uh, for example, on Facebook or whatever, that user they share together and say, oh, how can I do this and this? It's great because there is a community there and they discuss and they 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 share some tricks and uh, how they do. But really, you you don't need to hesitate. You can use this address and uh, and. Usually we we reply uh, during the day. You know, it's it's uh, uh, we reply that uh, to say okay, we 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 will study this, or it's very quick. We give the answer, or uh, as yeah, as uh, Sam explained, for example, in a very very particular application, um, he had the case with the movable front pickup point on the on the frame. Then we we did a, a proper study because uh, it was relevant there to help him. So so don't hesitate to use this email address. Excellent. Well, uh, Jan, thank you for the insights today. Thank you for all the knowledge on SunVision. Thank you for the three new features. Um, I really hope, obviously, um, every release of SunVision, we get three exciting new features. Um, I am doing my best to uh, send uh, praise to the team in development and R&D and application product design. So thank you, Sam, uh, Jan. Um, uh, thanks Welcome. for joining us today. And Sam, thank you as well. Um, it's great to have you on the team. I can't wait to have you buy us all a beer, um, hopefully sometime soon. Um, uh, and uh, thank you for joining us in the help today as well. Thank you. Well, everyone out there uh, watching us, once again, don't forget to subscribe. I will put in the show notes a reminder of that email address uh, in case you need to contact us. That's soundvision at lacoustics.com, so l-acoustics.com. Uh, my name is Scott Sugden. We've got uh, Jan Gael. We've got Sam with us. Uh, thank you guys very much. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Have a great rest of your day. Be safe. Be healthy. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.